Welcome to our downtown birthday bash. Good people, please lend me an ear. May 19, 1903, we became a city, and the Honorable Judge Cornwell is appointed our first mayor. Happy, Happy 119th, 119th birthday, Braden Town. Hold on, hold on. Braden Town? You're, you're pronouncing it wrong. There's no W. Well, actually, funny story. When we got our first post office, not only did we have a W, we actually had an I. Wow. But we got rid of the I when we became a city. About the W, that wasn't until 21 years later. Just a minute, I'll explain. Gulf Coast Telephone, good morning, Mayor Brown. How may I connect you? Yes, Olive. Can you connect me with the Philadelphia Public Ledger, 1924, please? Of course. Bradenton made the big time. Today's public ledger reads, putting aside its childhood name of Bradentown, suggestive of small town limitations, this beautiful Florida city has assumed the more dignified name of Bradenton. Bradenton. That settles our name issues. See no W. Oh, but there's one other thing about our unique identity. Just before we lose that W, the city of Bradentown holds a contest for best catchphrases about the city. And we get some doozies. Bradentown, golfing, fishing, bathing. Bradentown, fruit and vegetable center. Bradentown, free tourist camp. 1923, 300 signs boasting the slogans are posted as milepost signs in surrounding areas. Painted by P.J. Hampton, the sign painter of the city. And this dignified city goes a step further. 1924, due to this, the success of local campaign, the city votes to add 100 more signs. Placed at intervals from Lake City, Florida to Chattanooga, Tennessee, along the Dixie Highway. And from Jacksonville, Florida to Columbia, South Carolina, on the main highway to the Eastern Corridor. The most popular and winning slogan is... Bradentown, Town, the friendly city. Thanks for settling our identity issues, Mr. Mayor. You're always welcome, Olive. Hey, have I told you? Olive Hitchings was Braden Town's first telephone operator. Tell him, Jack. I'm Jack Leffingwell, grandson of General Hiram W. Leffingwell, who moved his family, bag and baggage, to Manatee County and brought him with him a couple of tons of government surplus number 12 copper wire to make grapevines for his proposed vineyards. He stored it for years at a barn in Ellington, which, by the way, was named for my step-grandmother, Ellen Patton Leffingwell, after my grandfather died, my dad. Dr. John Brooks Leffingwell. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It was widely known for over 20 years Dr. Leffingwell was the most handsome man in Manatee County. Anyway, my handsome dad brought the wire over here to Bradentown. I owned Bradentown's first drugstore and the Mana Vista Hotel right there. And I lived on Curry Point over in Point Pleasant. So for a whoop and holler, my dad and I, with our trusty hired hand Alec, installed Bradentown's first telephone lines so we can call from the pharmacy to the house. 1893. We couldn't get a smaller order from... Bell Telephone, so we got a couple of bootleg phone receivers and paid $7.50 each. We used the copper wires, pine sapling, and bottlenecks, and everyone wanted to talk on those phones. Soon, we opened a switchboard in the Duckwell building. Eleven phones! Good morning, Gulf Coast Telephone. And Olive Hitchings was the first phone operator in Manatee County. By 1910, there were around 600 phones in Bradentown. And by 1925, there were 2,600. Twice as many as Sarasota. That's progress. As a native of our city whose grandfather was on the city council, and now as a city councilwoman myself, I'm just so proud of where the decades have taken Bradenton. Way back in 1896, the very first public brick building in Bradentown was built, the Warren Opera House, right here on Old Main Street. It was an 800-seat house where people came to see plays and variety shows. And Edison's genuine talking pictures starting in 1913. Since then, 
Culture has blossomed in Bradenton. Just look around. The Art Center, Manatee. Manatee Performing Arts Center. The amazing Village of the Arts. Manatee Village Historical Park. Realize Bradenton. Our award-winning Manatee County Public Library. Oh, and in addition to all of this, we have Bradenton Bradenton Baseball. Baseball. Okay, everybody join in. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowds. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Well, 1895 to 1910s. The Town Bees. 1920. The Bradentown Profiteers and the Bradenton Growers. 1923, City Park is built. That ground used to be a nine-hole golf course. I used to go to the Manatee County Fair there. The Bradentown Growers were the first team to play in City Park. And then the St. Louis Cardinals and the Philadelphia Phillies. 1927, City Park renamed Ninth Street Park. The Boston Red Sox. And the St. Louis Cardinals again. When the St. Louis Cardinals were big, Dizzy Dean was the star pitcher. Dizzy and his brother Daffy played ball and welcomed everybody with big smiles at their gas station over on 10th Street and 4th across from Hampton. Dizzy would become a star sportscaster too, and he was always famous for his quips like, The good Lord was good to me. He gave me a strong right arm and a good body and a weak mind. (laughs) I remember Dizzy coming into the drugstore and the barbershop. People would be having a soda or something, and he'd pay for everybody in the store. In the barbershop, he'd pay for everybody's haircut. He wouldn't have a dime. He was ready to give it all away. Baseball's professional leagues were on fire. This included the Negro Leagues. They consist predominantly of African-American players, but featured Latin Americans too. Incidentally, to call the Negro Leagues by any other name would do them a disservice. They were among the largest and most prosperous black-owned business ventures at the time. They were profitable, popular, and culturally essential to the communities they served. Bradenton is included. 1937 to 1956. The Negro League's famous Bradenton Nine Devils entertained crowds. They were the Bradenton Aces, but last year they started with a nine straight win, so now they're the Bradenton Nine Devils. They're sanitation workers, field hands, store owners, who become baseball stars on the weekends. Sundays after church, over at the field, everybody comes out for their games. They average 1,500 fans each game, women wearing Sunday hats, kids, people laughing. Everybody knows each other. It's beautiful. And along with the success of the Nine Devils, a thriving Bradenton Black Business District exists on 9th Avenue West between 1st Street and 9th Street, you know, right near the park. Olive, can you connect me with Mayor Sterling Hall? Sure thing. Mayor Hall really made things happen in Bradenton. Mayor Sterling Hall here? Yeah, good to hear your voice, Mayor Hall. You served as mayor for 20 years, 1948 to 1968, and you accomplished so much. What are you most proud of? Integration. For sure, integration. It was not easy, but I believe in people, and we worked hard to integrate peacefully. Thank you, Mayor Hall. You're an inspiration to all. Thanks for making that connection, Mayor Brown. Back to baseball, 1962. Braves Field renamed McKechnie Field after Bradenton resident and baseball great Bill McKechnie. Fast forward, Kansas City, Oakland Athletics, Pittsburgh Pirates, Bradenton Explorers, and the Bradenton Marauders! 2017! McKechnie Field renamed Lee Com Park by Pittsburgh Pirates for Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Olive, connect me to Lee Com Park. The next game is Tuesday when the Marauders take on the Fort Myers Mighty Muscles. I'm getting my tickets now. Yes, Mr. Mayor, but in all this baseball hoopla, we flew across the century and overlooked a famous 19th century Bradentown citizen. Madam Joe! In 1876, I planted a few grains of coffee that had been given to me by a friend from Veracruz, Mexico. Well, lo and behold, they grew. So I sent my first pound of coffee to the commissioner of the Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C., under President Rutherford B. Hayes. And Bradentown's own 78-year-old Madam Joe received a $10 award 
from Washington, D.C. for growing the very first pound of coffee in the United States. Oh, and, and by the way, I was named Madam Joe long before because of my husband, Joe. But it must have just been meant to be. I planted those grains, cultivated them on our home garden soil over in Fogartyville, and made Bradentown's first cup of joe. Fogartyville in West Bradenton was founded right after the Civil War by the brothers John Toole and William Henry Fogarty. Originally, they were Key West shipbuilders, and they discovered the area in 1865 when Captain John sought shelter from a gulf storm in the Manatee River. He liked what he saw. So he and his brothers built a family home and boat yards. The house Toll Fogarty built for himself in 1872 still stands on Riverview Boulevard. They made Cypress fishing boats and transport vessels and shipped and hauled cattle and smoked mullet as far away as New Orleans. And boats remained the primary means of transportation to Fogartyville until... 1885. Where's Creek Bridge is completed, connecting it to the neighborhoods east via Manatee Avenue. The Manatee River and its bridges are the heart of the city. 1910. The first bridge across the Manatee River is built in Old Manatee, where 9th Street East is today. It's a quirky bridge because it starts in Old Manatee, but it ends up near where the Civic Center is. And if you know your geography, you know that's not a straight line. It goes out into the river and then it turns. So people would say, If you want to go to Palmetto, go to the middle of the river and turn left. <laughs> that was a toll bridge and people got fed up. Olive, can you connect me with Mayor Glazier, 1919? Yes, sir. Mayor Glazier, I have Mayor Brown on the line. Mayor Brown. We need a free bridge. So we build the Victory Bridge from 10th Street in Bradentown to Palmetto, a wooden bridge that gets the job done. 1926. Wooden bridge destroyed by hurricane. 1927. The first green bridge, a concrete bridge, is completed, commonly referred to then as the Million Dollar Bridge, due to the cost. 1986. Population in the last 50 years has increased from 6,000 to over 30,000. New green bridge is built, the one we use today. Oh, wait, 1924? The train bridge built by Tampa Southern Railroad. We still send orange juice to our friends up north on that bridge. <laughs> the Tropicana, the Tropicana train, train is coming. coming. May 21st, 2022. I'm so proud to stand in in this space, first enjoyed for thousands of years by indigenous native cultures for its perfect location along what was known as the Oyster River. Now, here in our beautiful spot along the Manatee River, we celebrate Bradenton's 119th birthday. We have tumbled through history with ups and downs, having coming through 119 years of beautiful and yes, uh, sometimes hard history. We've certainly had our share of enterprising citizens and quirky personalities that made us who we are. Olive, I really want to thank you for all your connections you've made this morning. My pleasure, Mr. Mayor. It's great to share my time traveling switchboard with everyone here. I absolutely love the public market. And of course, thank all of you. Today, we look forward to building our city's future history. We are proud of you all and are welcoming diverse, energetic, open-minded citizenry. You contribute to making Bradenton what it is and what it will be. Let's celebrate. Happy birthday, Bradenton. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bradenton. Happy birthday to you.